Whoa, what's up guys? We're back. It's Croup Scoop. We're back. Woo-hoo. Season 2. We know it's been a while. We haven't done a podcast in a while, but we decided to bring it back. How's everyone doing today? How's Hain? How's how's Jeffrey? I'm doing good. Um, We're actually off recording the longest podcast episode ever made. And somebody I know, forgot man. to save the file, so... Oops. <laughs> yeah, remember when we did that one month recording? I think I forgot to hit record. What do you, what? What do you mean you didn't re- hit record? I just didn't. I just forgot. You, But like the bar moves and, and like how did you not? I just minimized it because I thought, you know, we we just move on. It's a month. Yeah, well now the month is in the fucking trash. But with season two of Croup Scoop, we're, we're trying to do things a little different here. Basically so, changing essentially what the whole podcast is about. You want to talk about that? Yeah, so like our new focus of the podcast is we're going to be talking about topics of creativity and we're going to be talking about like the struggles of creative or being a creator and we're going to have advice. We're all different creators. We all we all make different kinds of media. So like Jeffrey and I, we make music and Ethan makes videos. Well, we're all we all make videos, but this should these topics should apply to like any kind of creator. So like if you like make art yeah. in general, these topics should be uh worth listening to we're pretty much getting rid of the whole <laughs> balls weekly balls segment so no more news we're, we ain't talking about news here anymore what is this drama alert get it from smart people and keemstar yeah <laughs> keemstar especially he's smart no he's yeah. not i'm saying and keemstar, <laughs> he's not smart he's not smart oh okay okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but hey yeah. keemstar if you want to come on and talk about what drives you creatively you're free to <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, since we all we always have kind of talked about like art that we enjoy and stuff that we like enjoy that has been made by other people. So we figured why not talk about like creating from our perspective and, you know, because it's something we all like to do. It's something we all struggle with. And I'm sure a lot of you out there struggle with it as well, because creating is tough and it can be draining and it's but it's a very rewarding experience you know yeah we've had a lot of creators on in the past we could have a lot of these people come back and they could talk about what what their process is into creating either youtube videos or music and stuff so for this first episode we decided that we wanted to you know since we're starting off a new leaf turning over a new leaf we might as well talk about what got us started on this path down our um creative journeys just initially like what was you know, what was our starting point in becoming people that make stuff? So, Hank, Kai, you want to go first? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Woo-hoo! I guess, like, my main thing I, de- I identify with is my music. But I actually started off with, like, making, like, plush videos and stuff uh, when I was, like, 11 years old. So I've always been a video guy. And then somewhere along the ride, I started making electronic music. And we thought it'd be fun to show some of our old projects that we uh started off with so i have some projects from back in 2014 and we can start off oh my god (laughs) we can yeah this is actually the one i want to start off with so this sweet so some of the songs i have since i was a beginner i kind of made stuff bad on purpose and some of the stuff i tried on and i think i believe this is the one this is one of the ones i kind of tried on so we'll skip around because I don't want to listen to the entire thing. But okay. Holy shit! <laughs> sounds like um. Kind of sounds like a Mario like Bowser's Castle. Yeah. So you can already hear like... it that it's out of tune. Okay, you can skip to the middle. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, wait a minute. This might not be the one I tried on. (laughs) Go, go! Or I would start a lot of projects and then, like, give up. So you can hear that. Okay, we can skip to another one. Alright. Let's listen to... Let's listen to... Was it called Aw Yeah? (laughs) Was it Aw Yeah? Which one we listen to next? We can listen to Best Song. Oh, this one's got to be the best song. This one's crazy. Are Are you ready? (laughs) Yeah, you can just skip around whenever you feel like it's getting... Okay. 
That's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I used a lot of the free FL so Studio easy. voice lines because I didn't have anything else. So you're hear, you'll hear a lot of those within my production. Yeah, just skip around. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Was that a, a holy shit? All right, we can, that's crazy. We can go to the next one. <laughs> Wait, when, when when did you make this? 2014. So like, okay, do Untitled now. All right, here we go on Untitled. It's kind of an experimental one for me. Whoa. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much the whole song, so... It's like this... It's pretty like interesting. Spamming, spamming hi-hats. Alright, now we can go to that one, yeah. VOC, it's a smash hit. Ooh! Yeah. <laughs> this one sounds like it's gonna be good. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yep. It's a smash hit. 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 It's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For for anybody listening, Hankai's music does not sound exactly like that anymore. It is still pretty cool and interesting, though. I I feel like those are pretty interesting. Yeah, like yeah. For starting out, I feel like you. Like I feel like you're still I feel like a lot of kids in, just like, make like remixes when they're like fourteen. You like yeah. actually trying to make brand new stuff. Yeah. I feel like I can still kind of hear the you look like the taste for like experimental stuff and yeah. just like doing doing you know just you know messing around and seeing if you can make something cool out of chaos. I think it's still there even back then which is cool. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, I make well nobody knows this, but I make like experimental. I I would I would identify myself as an experimental electronic producer. Anyways, Let's move on to the next person. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. Who's next? Me? You? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah you cool. go. I'll go last. All right. <laughs> I've got your videos. I'm going to be showing a bunch of crap. Here we All go. Right. Any of these um, first? Let's do Let's do the Silly Kids episode four. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, uh -oh. So here's a story with this one. This was... <sighs> Silly Kids episode four. I was like twelve or eleven when I made this. Um, this was. I remember I finished this video before I went out to Nebraska. It was like a family trip. So I and I remember I showed my dad this video, and he was so impressed with it. He was just like blown away with this stupid <laughs> video. So he put it on. He uploaded it on Facebook, and a lot of family members saw it, Whoa. and they were blown away. So, like, when I was in Nebraska, a lot of people were coming up to me about it. They're like, hey, I saw your video on Facebook. You're a really good video editor. You should keep doing stuff. And, like, I guess that this was the video that was, like, what made me have the strive to get better at editing, I guess. Yeah, I mean, when you look back on it now, it's kind of, kind of just stupid kids with a camera recording in a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, go right. ahead and hey, let's, let's see it. Let's watch it. Oh, 
<laughs> hey, who's that? Hmm? It's the good doctor. Hmm? Oh, hi, Steven! Hey, no! <laughs> Wait, Steven, no! Steven! <laughs> you know what you did? No, you know? Steven, you... <laughs> Idiot Steven. The door was stuck. You locked the bathroom door. Now we're, we're both stuck in here. <laughs> and now it's locked. How are we going to get out now? I don't know. Oh no, what are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, what are we yeah, gonna do, Steven? What are we gonna do? They also what? thought it was really funny, too. Like, every time do? my dad would show somebody this, they would just find it the funniest thing they've ever seen. Oh, that was awesome. It's so called for, called Hill for Iron Man? Yes. Yeah. It's so Hill for Iron Man? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you oh, how we you. made this video. We really did just, just go in a bathroom and <laughs> Steven, like, come up with a. <laughs> Steven had to cry. Yeah, no script. No, it's just. I'm, oh. I I edited this Steven, on Windows do do? Movie Maker. It's an evil butterfly. Yeah. We need to oh no, we need it's to an evil help. butterfly. I think I did like. I only really did cuts and like a filter over like the last part to make it look. No. no. I think it's about to show up right now. Five months. Later. Oh no, they've been stuck in the Whoa, bathroom for been five stuck months. Holy shit. And they're no, <laughs> their <laughs> light goes out and they used the wrong there. I'm getting hungry. Me too. Me too. I want a giant pizza. Me too. I want a donut chicken wing. Mommy, oh, you look like, like chicken. chicken. Wing. <laughs> Is he to you, Steven? Yeah. 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 Uh oh, copyrighted <laughs> music. Watch out. Oh. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. It might be like a weird. I remember it was like a it's... weird Looney Tunes theme I found on like a free music <laughs> right. website. Hey, that's it. Video filmed by all three of us. Yeah. Yep. They all filmed. Okay. <laughs> yep, that's um. That was, that was awesome. That was so that was actually lost media for a sec. I had I couldn't find that video because I deleted it a long time ago, but it was still on my dad's Facebook. So that's how I found it. Oh. But it's it's actually probably like, I don't know, like, ten, twelve years old now. Dang. Since I made it. <clears throat> that's crazy. That's awesome. All right, what's next? Um, let's do, let's do S Silly Kids movie teaser, I guess. <laughs> this one's, we don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay. So this is around the same era too. Um, this never, ring, I ring, never did this. Ring, ring. But I guess when I was younger, Who is it this time? I really wanted to make a movie. <laughs> And I realized how much actually goes into making a movie. Okay. And so, you can't just like. <laughs> That's a bomb! And bombs explode! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so. <laughs> so that's. This is supposed to be a trailer. It's like a little teaser. It's like, oh, he exploded. Oh my god, what's gonna happen next? I gotta go see the movie now. So then I do like a. <laughs> Whoa. So then I do like a oh, little. Oh my god. Whoa, shit. <clears throat> <laughs> your release date? <laughs> yeah. Never came out. It's supposed to come out on my birthday? Too busy on my birthday. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Whoa, what are we gonna get? Silly fied. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa, is this so freaking all movie. American rejects? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That's so awesome. No, yeah, it's not. So it's Lincoln Park. Oh yeah, it is copyright. <laughs> yeah, we got it. There's actually like 
There's like 10 silly kid stuff that me and Steven used to make. And a lot of it's gone now because I was insecure about it <laughs> like seven years ago and I got rid of them all. Now I regret it. I wish I could see all of them again. Dang, but, yeah. um, let's do Sorry next. That will be my last one. This was like probably like when I started to do like more psychedelic effects in my videos. And I used to do this a lot. This was like six years ago. I used to do like... I don't know, I was super into psychedelic music at the time. So like Tame Impala, Mac DeMarco, tons of other musicians that are just like that. And I I tried to implement that into my videos in a way. And this was, this was just me saying, oh, I'm back. I haven't made a video in a while. And I just made it trippy for no reason. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, how old is this? It's a little. This was six years ago. Like that kind of looks. Okay, that looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> but like. <laughs> oh. What was that? I don't remember this. Oh my god! They're flipping bottles. Oh, what was that? <laughs> what? I don't know. I just did weird edits. Like, in the beginning of all my videos, it's just <laughs> hey, something like me. that. Yeah, hey, I watch this video, apparently. We yeah, have lol. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. now, uh, I think I'm better at making effects like that. Make them at least look more... Because I... This just looks... It just looks kind of rough when I look back on it. I feel like I can make this look better. <laughs> New croup yeah. video coming out soon, right? Oh, yeah. New croup video, yeah. I'm pointing at the camera. You better watch out for that. You better watch out for the new croup video. Watch out for that new freaking video. Well, I guess that I am next. So I've separated mine to cool ones and funny ones. We're not going to listen to all of them. I'm going to skip around. But I, hello, I'm Jeffrey. In case you didn't know, Blinky, please. I'm, I'm on the group scoop. Um, I have been producing music since I think the summer after my freshman year of high school because I saw future funk music on SoundCloud, which is not really popular anymore. It was practically just people taking popular music from like the eighties and speeding it up, but it was pretty cool to me. And I was like, people make this people make this. So I wanted to get in there. So I legally acquired FL studio and just started making songs. So uh, the the first song I ever made, I still have. Um, it's I I sampled the uh Animal Crossing. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna play it. I sampled Animal Crossing in it. Nintendo. Hold on, it's about to get original here. Not yet. Hold, hold on. Oh my god, it's speeding up? Whoa. Are those OG drums? <laughs> Whoa. Oh shit. Whoa. Oh yeah, I also... <laughs> I put random sounds in it too. Okay, that's that's it. Oh wait, hold on. One, two, uh, yeah, I sampled. I Whoa! Sampled, I sampled <laughs> Outcast in there too. Oh, and then. Whoa! Holy shit! And then I put Envy out and at the Andy end out. from a commercial from like 2010. Um, so that was the first song I ever made. Pretty bad, pretty terrible. Kind of just stole something and then did a bunch of random shit to it. And then songs I'm actually still proud of. Kinda. This is one of my early tracks. Super simple, but it's fun. Um, oh, this is the part, important part. Like a little nice, little fun, interesting idea. Because this was like early, early on. But or I, on the same track, I tried to put Childish Gambino on it, and I, I messed up. Peanut butter jelly, do the peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat, do the. 
But yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to show. Um, yeah, I went I went pretty fast through them, but it was just me in my room from the ages of like fifteen to probably like sixteen or seventeen. All these all these songs, just making random stuff. What um what made you want to make music? Uh, well, when did I, you start wanting to make music? But I had always been like interested in music, you know. Like I, but like be, before that, it was kind of just like Pandora and sh- like Weezer and stuff. Just like not really thinking that much about it. But it was, I think yeah. it was just like discovering SoundCloud and that people like, you know, can just like make this stuff alone. And like this was the time where bedroom pop was kind of blowing up. So it was like I was, it was like, whoa, I could make music. I could do it. So I kind of I took an interest in it and I would I just, you know, kept making random stuff. And I kind of missed that time because I feel like now yeah. the older I get, I put way too much thought into it. Um, and even then, I never finish songs like I have a lot of like stuff that's like working work in progress. Finish this one, like literally named like finish this one. I'm coming back to finish this song. Never finished. And it's like. But even then, like, I would still just, like, think so much less about it when I started out and just, like, make stuff and try stuff out and not be afraid to make something terrible and what it would mean about the quality of my art. And I think that's something interesting about, you know, early days, you know, because I I guess I think back to when I was terrible and I realized I did not care that much, you know, when it was first, first starting. Mm -hmm. When I think back to, it's the same for me. Mm. Like, when I was putting out videos, I didn't care, like, what was popular on YouTube. I didn't care, like, what kind of videos people watch. I just, I just put whatever I wanted to make, I just made it, and I put it out. I did not give a fuck when I was... (laughs) Yeah. When you grow up, your taste evolves, and your taste evolves faster than your skill set. So usually you start as you like continue to like be creative and create like your craft, your uh, taste will evolve faster. So your standards for yourself will get higher, but then you start to hate. Yeah, exactly. Like around like halfway through. Well, Hayne, how was it? How did you feel when you used to suck ass? So like (laughs) I didn't, I didn't really care too much about music, you know, like I, I mean, those songs were just really I really tried to just make noise, I guess, and I don't know. And when I when I I noticed when I started to care a little bit, it like got stressful, you know. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of stopped for a long time, like in high yeah, school. Yeah, that's what happened to me. I stopped editing for years. I there was just a point in time where I just uh, like after high school, I just worked and I didn't do anything. <laughs> Went to college, yeah. Didn't do any editing or anything. I think mm-hmm. recently we've all like gotten a lot better at everything, and we realize, oh, we could, we should do it. You know, we should make stuff, and that's why I think recently, like Jeffrey and I have been making music a lot. Um, we've been making Crip Scoop videos, you know, making more interesting, unique Crip Scoop yeah. videos to put out. We have some. We have some other side projects going on yeah Um, i think i think looking back at like you know where you start i think from a pure place of i want to make this thing how can i try and make this thing you know you don't you don't sit and think about how to make like how to make it good or how to like in terms of music how to like eq and how to make a quality like mix that's proper Mm -hmm. you know and when you think about all that stuff you know too early i think it can you know, it can stress out the process a lot because you're like, oh, my God, yeah. I have to do all this stuff. And this this instrument is problematic in, in the mix. So I should maybe do something about that now, you know, and it's like you you, you know, you need to do the part where you're messing around with it in the first place, where you're just doing a bunch of random crap and throwing it. And I think what's helped me a lot recently in getting more stuff done is allowing myself that time to like try and you know reconnect with the kid that's like like in one of those songs i made like i sampled a bubble popping and then someone like vaping because that just came into my head i tried to i tried to (laughs) that was yeah i tried to let that guy do a bunch of random stuff and then 
I let adult self-deprecating really really critical jeffrey go through and try to fix everything afterwards and i think that's kind of that's kind of the key to being somebody who creates stuff because at the end of the day being a creative is trying to reconnect with your inner child i, I know how corny that sounds but yeah that's what it is at least to me i guess the main theme of this episode is probably like trial and error because yeah. if you like look back at you like even this podcast group scoop you could see, like, trial and error if you go back and look at some of the episodes. Top three, we could we could not figure out how to do a podcast for a while without top three. Yeah, it's... We yeah. did top three movies, we did top three animes. What do we do now? <laughs> yeah, we're like, crap, you know? top three fast food places? Oh, okay, what next, though? We just, like, we're running out. There's no more things. Yeah, the only there's only so normal. many things you can top three. What am I going to do, like, top three coins? Yeah, for a little while, we, we kind of just, the podcast was just kind of like all over the place, it seems. Yeah, no focus. And like, That's why we're trying no to focus, focus it more. Yeah, we're trying to yeah. we're trying to distill it down to something more, you know, more focused. So kind of getting back to the early, you know, early work, let's talk about some like early inspirations that we had, like at the time when we were getting, you know, first getting into it. Because I feel like, you know, there's that person that makes you realize you can do what they do and you or you're like you want to do what they do Kane, what's mm -hmm. what are some early inspirations for you dude i had a lot of like dubstep producers that i liked a lot so like i'm thinking of like porter robinson old porter robinson not that not that it, the new stuff is but back then i really liked um whatever the fuck that song was what shelter um, no it was <laughs> goodbye to a so, world uh, sad machine oh i was close um so like that kind of music that like melodic feeling um also like a lot of like studio ghibli music i like really like like the feel of and then on the crazier side uh skrillex <laughs> and um this one dubstep artist called eptic i know like nobody knows who the hell that guy is but something about his like sounds are very um I don't know the way he like they're very unique and in your face and not like screechy annoying but like interesting and like melodic i guess if that makes sense and he had a lot of like interesting phrases that he would make with the sounds and i really appreciated that back then at least but um those are like my inspirations and i would say they they still impact me today because like there's some that like i don't give a fuck about anymore and i kind of want to like Get rid of that in my head, if that makes sense. Just like generic dubstep. I kind of, I kind of briefly touched on it earlier, but I'll name drop some people. Uh, specifically, Moe Shop <laughs> was a future funk producer, and that was like when I realized, like, I can produce music. I could be the one making it. Did I make any future funk? No, <laughs> not a lick of it. Um, I think I ended up making trap music a lot when I started, and I kind of just like didn't really know what I wanted to make. I feel like my inspirations kind of came in, you know, when I, when I got into the process of creating music and then like saw something, I'm like, how did they make that? What comes to mind specifically is a, a JPEG mafia, incredible uh, producer rapper. And I think what kind of inspires me a lot with music and stuff is people that are just so in their own, you know realm in their own little world just doing their thing because i think because i don't like think i'm really like inspired by specific movements and i've i've made a lot of different random types of music uh but like people like childish gambino it's like they they kind of exist in this like they create their own like sonic plane and they're not even like afraid to you know switch it yeah. up like childish gambino he did because the internet a, a rap album with like a crazy like lore about being a rich kid who's on twitter and famous or whatever with a like script or whatever not important and then he goes and does um the album that redbone was on that i'm forgetting the name of awaken my love which is like a 70s soul album like people that are you know willing to just like creatively reinvent themselves and just keep on making stuff that is like interesting i think that's really inspirational to me 
because I'll often like end up making something different and like getting interested in completely different sounds and being like kind of wishy-washy about it but I kind of ground myself in being like well this person you know I want to be able to encapsulate all these different like types of sounds and stuff into my own like sonic voice in a way that a lot of these people that inspire me have am I am I doing that uh may maybe sometimes I don't know group <laughs> <laughs> so like wait so like so you you really like so artists that don't like have like a genre they stick to and like yeah what are you trying to say yeah yeah I really yeah, like I, I, I really appreciate that now today <laughs> yeah yeah like artists so, that just kind of do whatever or they have like such a specific you know like when you hear it you're like oh that's that person even if it's like a random song yeah you know or even like you hear something you're like that's that's them and you hear but you can you can still feel them in the music no matter what genre they're yeah. doing yeah they have like a signature yeah, exactly sound mm -hmm. yeah i agree i agree those are like more like my my inspirations now i i can't i feel like 2017 was kind of when i was like most inspired by other musicians and i childish gambino jpeg mafia were definitely two really big ones thundercat although he's not kind of the same as them in that i don't even know what he makes like funk i guess <laughs> yeah, like he jazz. makes he makes bass guitar music yeah <laughs> he's really good at the bass Damn. what are some <clears throat> early inspirations for you group i'm gonna have to say tame impala <laughs> <laughs> Say what you wanted about Tame Impala. Uh, back then, when I was like 16, 15, Tame Impala meant a lot to me. I don't know if you guys know, but for the most part, Tame Impala is one person. Yeah. Yeah. So, a lot of Tame Impala's music kind of reflects that, like loneliness or like getting over like past what you've done in the past and stuff like that. I feel like his music kind of stands out to me that way that he's he's kind of doing music by himself in a way him being a lonely creator i don't know that really resonated with me when i was 16 15 and it like really helped me i wanted to create visuals that would match that kind of music like i wanted to make stuff look old i wanted to make stuff look retro i just really gravitated towards like the trippy slash vapor wavy visual style that's kind of what i want to keep doing I want to keep doing that with croup. Just make it more refined and make it more better in a way. <clears throat> but yeah, Tame Impala, Mac DeMarco, Pond. A lot of them helped me find a visual lens to 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 pull through. Because I used a lot of their music in my videos too. Mac DeMarco, I used like uh, what's a chamber of reflection for my intro. You know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like guess music in a way helped me helped me like make videos yeah, in a way that's music really was an important part of yeah, it that's really awesome that you know music even though there's no visuals to it it still gave you such inspiration to like make visual stuff and that's kind of what's yeah. cool about art and creative and creating and stuff and we don't want to just like talk about only music and like making uh videos or we don't want it to only apply to that you know because yeah. i feel like yeah, if you know if you're writing a book come on here Exactly. Talk about <laughs> what it's like yeah, to write a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell us tell us how many tell us your page counts and stuff. I don't know what people who write books talk about. You could tell us. You could learn us. You could teach us, I mean. But yeah, like I I I do also like have just inspiration from like other other things. Like I I watched Blade Runner a few months ago. That's that movie is awesome and it definitely inspired a few like songs out of me that I wouldn't have made before it. So inspiration yeah. can Visuals. come from yeah. anywhere. Yeah, visuals can inspire music, and music can inspire visuals. They work well together. Mm -hmm. But speaking yeah, of like... recent inspirations, um, what's some music that's been inspiring you guys recently? Yeah, old Croup Scoop fans, it's time for Croup Tunes. Croup Tunes, woohoo! It's back, baby. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I mean, I guess we should explain it, huh? <laughs> oh well in case yeah. they don't know what it in is in case you don't know what croup tunes is we all pick a album song or ep or any amount of music that we see fit that has been inspiring us recently that has been interesting to us and share it with each other and you guys i'll go first i am going to pick an album that it's not necessarily this week but since it's been like 10 months I'm just going to pick an album called I Will Not Use the Body's Eyes Today by Fire Tools. Um, That's a good one. Yes. 
Fire Tools is a hard to explain artist. You know, they work on like some jazzy stuff. They do a little bit of like screaming, like screamo screaming music. And you might think, what is this person? But basically, they make really interesting experimental, like electronic music. Um, and this album, uh, I just kind of found on a whim. Spotify recommended it to me. And um, I just really appreciate the melding of a lot of different sounds under like one blanket that probably like should not work. Like there's the song Soda Lake with Game Genie. Um, yeah. It's like practically like a smooth jazz song, but there's also screamo lyrics over it. And it does not match with the rest of the album whatsoever, but it's just such an interesting moment. And then the rest of the album's like super, I guess, electronic. It's it's really hard to talk about. I would just go listen to it if you like experimental electronic music. My favorite songs off of it are Soda Lake with Game Genie and There Is Only One Suffering. Oh, God, I have to finish reading the title. It's really long. The Suffering of the okay it's rolling on spotify this is okay the <laughs> suffering of the divine circle dance there we go there's only one suffering the suffering of the design circle dance is the title of the second song they like long titles too if you couldn't tell mine is an album from an artist or band or somebody i don't know anything about this this artist but um they're called kfc murder chicks um <laughs> what the fuck huh? they, they're, they're, murder chicks? yeah they're they're just like this experimental like i don't know if they make electronic they're it's like mostly electronic it's the uh, loss prevention reloaded and it's just this 40 minute long album and it's just so like dirty and grimy and every song is just a banger and i've i don't really i haven't really been listening to it too intently like it's just been in kind of the background while playing video games but um some of the songs catch me off guard and i'll be i'll be jamming to it my favorite song and there's probably a song called lawn mower man <laughs> it's just like this kind of like <laughs> this, this dude just kind of like rapping on it but it's like kind of corny but it's the production's super dirty and grimy and it's awesome i love it it and looks pretty it, awesome <laughs> it's one of those it's one of those albums where i'm like i want to make a couple of songs that sound like this okay so i'm gonna do liquid colors by cfcf Ooh. it's um it's mostly an instrumental and a ambient album a lot of these songs make me feel super nostalgic and i've been listening to it a lot i listen to it at work i listened to it earlier today while i was editing um the haunted ps1 video because a lot of these songs kind of have like a like a jungle mix type of beat to it you know like the ps1 style yeah yeah music and I've, I've been really digging that kind of music recently and there's a lot of that in here and i love the album color kind of reminds me of like ikea or something <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh it's it's a really great album if you've never heard cfcf please check out cfcf great great music Retweet. memory land yep yeah great yeah, album agree and this is another one I found that I never knew they made, but it was I thought it was great. My favorite song, probably Aquascape or Closed Space. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I haven't listened to this yet. I Yeah, I've listened to yeah. part of Look it. Look at that awesome cover, man. It is a really <laughs> great <laughs> cover. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. There's a cool music video for it, too, where it's just this, but it's 3D animated, Ooh. which is Ooh. really cool. It sounds pretty fun. Well, hey, um, we're actually also sh making the podcast a little bit shorter, trying to keep it like 50 minutes. Yeah, we know you got stuff to do, so you can just stop in with yeah. us for like around 50 minutes, hang out, shoot the shiz. Um, all right, is that the scoop? Yeah. Cheers the to, scoop. The, to the future of the podcast. To the future of the season, podcast. To season two. We'll also do it around once a month, less than yeah. what we did in the Oh, past. yeah, yeah. See you guys in like a but, month. Yeah, it'll be more. It'll have more editing than normal. Yeah, it'll be. So, it's gonna be better, we'll guys. You're gonna like it. It's gonna be better. We're trying to make. We're trying to make Crib Scoop 
just better in general. So let us Leave know. Leave suggestions in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, if you like this new format, let us know if you think we're a bunch of freaking idiots and we should go back if to. You want us to go f- if you a- want us to fuck off, then yeah, tell us to fuck if off. If you want us to yeah. get out of here, we'll leave forever and just get a moderator out. just in our server. You can let me know too. Oh. Yeah. If you're yeah, a mod in our server, the post the a comment in the chat <laughs> as well. Yeah. Okay. Is that the scoop? <laughs> that's the that's scoop. scoop. Yeah. That's, that's the scoop. scoop. All right. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>